It is not as if you could say, well, let's just resolve this original dispute over the succession and we can be one. There is now 1400 years of different political, social, cultural, and theological history that separates them. Sunni and Shia Muslims have some overlapping ideologies and practices. Although disagreements between the two have been going on for centuries, Shias, aka Shiites, and Sunnis share core beliefs and practices. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and this is a channel where we explore the different people, places, and culture that make up our world. Now, oftentimes, the media tends to focus on the differences between Sunnis and Shias. That's pretty much it. But in this episode, I'm going to look at five similarities as well as five differences. And it's important to note that many Muslims do not distinguish themselves by claiming membership to any particular group of Islam, but they just refer to themselves simply as Muslims and just being a part of Islam, period. Now there's some Islamic groups that hold different views, but generally speaking, these are the main similarities. And that's what I'm gonna take a look at first, the similarities. So starting with number 10, counting down to number one. We have the one true faith. Islam for both Sunnis and Shias is considered the one true faith. For Muslims, Islam is more than just a belief. It's a way of life, or rather the way of life. Of course, this belief of being the one true faith has been the source of a lot of struggle between Muslims and those of other faiths, but Sunnis and Shias do stand united in the belief that Islam is the only way. So the next similarity I'm taking a look at is the belief in one God. Sunni and Shias are fully monotheistic, and monotheistic in simpler terms literally just means that they believe in only one God, Allah. While some denominations of Christianity, for example, they take a look at their prophet, Jesus, and put him as equal with God, and of course include him in the Godhead or the Trinity, doctrines like that. But Muslims regard their prophet, Muhammad, as just someone who was inspired by God, but he was still just a human. Sunnis and Shias believe their belief of monotheism is the correct belief because there is only just one God, and there doesn't leave any room for any doctrines like the Trinity, where three Three is considered one, or the beliefs like in Hinduism, for example, where a supreme being is identified, yes, but the being can be worshipped through various manifestations of different gods or goddesses. Islam doesn't have anything to do with that, it's just, nope, one god, period, that's it, that's all you gotta know. The next similarity is the Quran. So the Quran is a holy text of both Sunnis and Shias. Both of them accept the Quran, sometimes spelled Quran with a K. They believe the Quran is the holy book and that it contains the indisputable will of Allah and his plans for humanity. Both Sunnis and Shias believe that the Quranic laws called Sharia supersedes worldly laws of the land. The next similarity I'm taking a look at is the five pillars of Islam. Even if you're not a Muslim, you've probably heard the term before, but this is another similarity between them. The pillars of Islam form the foundation of the faith for both Shias and Sunni Muslims. Sunni and Shia Muslims accept and practice the five pillars of Islam and these five core acts are considered essential to what it means to actually live out the Islamic faith. The five pillars are summarized as follows. The declaration of the belief in Allah as the one true God and his last prophet, Muhammad. Second is daily prayers. Third is charitable deeds and giving to the less fortunate. Fourth is fasting during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. And five is taking a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in your lifetime, as long as you can afford it and are physically able to do so. Next similarity is the use of images. So the Arabic calligraphy is a stylized and very fascinating form of decor. Calligraphy is very different because any depiction of the human form, especially of the prophets of Islam, are viewed as idolatry by both Sunnis and Shias, which is considered a sin. In the art and architecture of Sunni and Shia, you will not find any representations of Allah or the Prophet Muhammad, as you might expect to find artwork of gods in Hindu temples. Instead, both Sunnis and Shias decorate their mosque with patterns and shapes and quotes in Arabic calligraphy. So those are five of the main similarities. Now I want to transition over and move on to five of the main differences. So let's take a look. The Shia-Sunni divide is a political and religious divide around who 
was the rightful heir after the passing of the Prophet Muhammad in early Islam. The first difference to take a look at is the leadership and name. So the division between Shia and Sunni dates all the way back to the passing of the Prophet Muhammad in the year 632. This raised the big question of who is going to take over the leadership of the Muslim nation. Sunnis make up the largest branch of Islam and the word Sunni in Arabic comes from the word meaning one who follows the traditions of the Prophet. Sunni Muslims agree that the new leader should be elected among those that are capable to carry out the job. Abu Bakr, a friend and advisor of the Prophet Muhammad, became the first caliph, which is a successor or deputy of the Prophet of the Islamic nation. Shia Muslims, they believe that following the Prophet Muhammad, leadership should have passed directly to his cousin and son-in-law, Ali bin Abu Talib, and Shia Muslims do not recognize the authority of elected Muslim leaders, choosing instead to follow a line of Imams which they believe have been appointed by the Prophet Muhammad or by God himself. The word Shia in Arabic means a group or supportive party of people. About 85% are Sunni and 15% are Shia. This is a conflict of identity far more than it is a conflict of belief and practice. People actually do feel this divide deeply. So the next difference is the location. Sunni Muslims make up an 85% majority of the Muslims from all around the world. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Yemen, Pakistan, Indonesia, Turkey, Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are predominantly Sunni. Large populations of Shia Muslims can be found in Iran and Iraq. Large Shia minority communities can also be found in countries like Yemen, Bahrain, Syria, and Lebanon. The religious differences are embedded in the culture that in these places where large Sunni and Shia groups live together, coexisting is very challenging, almost impossible to happen. Sunnis and Shi'is is one big family that need to forget this uh, thousand year old division and, and look at the, the problems that we face now. The next difference is temporary marriages. So this is a big one. Nikah muta or temporary marriage is an ancient Islamic practice that usually happens when a man has to travel far distances. The term literally translates to pleasure marriage and it basically unites a man and a woman as husband and wife but only for a predetermined and temporary amount of time and there's some other rules that apply as well. Shias still believe and honor this practice. Sunnis however view it as complete adultery which is a sin. There's also a difference in their religious leadership. So I touch on it briefly, but there are varying beliefs about this. But in a very general sense, Shia Muslims believe that the authority of the Imam is infallible because it comes directly from God. They perform pilgrimages to their tombs and shrines in hopes of divine intercession. Sunni Muslims completely counter this belief because they believe that there is no basis in Islam for a privileged group of spiritual leaders based on heredity. And also, they don't believe that there's any basis for intercession of saints. Sunnis say that leadership of the Muslim community is not a birthright, but rather something that is earned through trust and may be given or taken away by the people. And the final difference that I'm taking a look at is the difference in religious texts and practices. Shia Muslims tend to feel animosity towards some of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad. This is based on their position and actions during the early years of discord about leadership in the community. Many of those companions, Abu Bakr, Umar bin al Khattab, Aisha, and several others, have narrated traditions about the Prophet's life and spiritual practice. Shia Muslims reject these traditions and do not base any of their religious practices on those testimonies of those individuals. This naturally gives rise to some differences in religious practice between the two groups. These differences touch all aspects of the religion including prayer, fasting, pilgrimage, etc. Muslims now need to be united more than at any time. In order to be united, we need to forget these old hurts and we need to look at the reality of the present situation. The reality of the present situation is that Sunnis and Shi'is use the same Quran. Okay guys, so that was a look at some of the differences and similarities between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. Let me know all your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section about anything that I mentioned in this episode. If you have anything to add, throw it in there as well. We love to learn together here on FTD Facts. 
Now before you head out, here's another video where I dive more into the world of religion. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, you know, show it some love as well as ring that bell and I'll see you all real soon. Tomorrow actually, we post videos daily here on FTD Facts. Alright guys, later.